So is it just me or has 2024 been filled to the brim with a ton of sleeper hits for gaming? Like it feels like every month or so we get a game that surpasses every expectation we had for it and it just keeps coming. And after playing and beating yet another one of these, I can say that without a shadow of a doubt, Visions of Mana deserves to be one of those sleeper hits. Now, in comparison to a lot of other people who have played and reviewed this title, I actually have never played a mana game before in my life. Yes, I admit it. I am a fraud. Do with me what you will. But I think I can say that after playing this, I'm definitely a fan of this franchise and want to check out more. But what did I think was so good about this game? Was anything in it bad? Well, how about I finish up my yapping and let's get into my review of Visions of Mana. So, getting into my first bit of praise for Visions, I want to gush at just how damn nice this whole game is to look out. Cause, good god, was this game a treat for the eyes. Being made in Unreal Engine 4, it has a lot of the same kind of eye-popping visuals something like Kingdom Hearts 3 did. And I do mean eye-popping. Tons of absolutely gorgeous looking landscapes and dungeons, beautifully rendered cutscenes, and amazing character and monster designs that look so unbelievably pleasing in both overworld traversal and of course combat. You can really tell how much effort went into each and every area to make them look as nice as possible. And since I brought up gameplay, let's end the discussion of visuals here and get into things like combat and traversal, because it was easily my favorite part of the entire game. I went over a brief description of the gameplay in the demo video I made a while back, and I thought it was a lot of fun, especially in regards to things like movement. And I was really excited to see what the full game brought to the table. And gotta say, not only did it meet my expectations, but it basically surpassed them in every single way. It has what the demo introduced, multiple playable characters, each with their own playstyles of light and heavy attacks, based on what elemental vessel you had equipped. My personal favorites were probably the rogue and samurai classes on Morley, because not only did I think that those classes were the most fun to play as, but they also fit into the basis of team synergy for the job classes which I honestly think is Vision's strongest aspect. And that's just how well it utilizes its job classes. I know I've seen some people complain about Vision's normal attacks not doing as much damage as they should to things like bosses. And truthfully, that's kind of the point. Bosses in Visions aren't really meant to just be bum-rushed with whatever one class and attack you have. Several bosses in this game severely depend on you using the job system to its full advantage, like using the Water Elemental to create bubbles on the boss's attack points, then swapping over to Val's Greatsword to deal a heavy hit along with causing the bubbles to explode to do more damage, or using the Dark Elemental's break attack that you unlock through the elemental pots along with various spells and buffs to immobilize the enemy, plus doing insanely high amounts of damage. But while he has the enemy stuck, you can charge in with another character to deal more damage, like Morley's Samurai, or you can use the time to heal up your party, or you can use the elemental that slows down time in order to regroup and launch one of your special 100% gauge super moves to deal some crazy damage. Or you could go to another character that can hit the enemy a lot, or possibly land some status effect damage with the fire elemental. Or I could bring up fortifying defense with the earth elemental. Or the combo potential of the air elemental. But I still got gameplay stuff to talk about, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Move on to talking about the ability seeds. Special pieces of equipment that when placed onto characters, grant them various kinds of buffs that increase their stats or passive boosts to gameplay such as allowing you to utilize certain kinds of spells and passive elemental buffs in battle. You can obtain these seeds through either finding them in the overworld or obtaining them through trading enemy core stones to shopkeepers for one. The more rare and powerful the monster core stone, the better. I like them a lot as it was nice that the developers added another layer of customization to the characters. Well, that and the elemental pot, which was something I didn't mention in a one-off earlier, but I figured I'd give it a bit more time to shine here. So basically, every time you unlock a new job, you get a new line of upgrades in the elemental pot. From special magic skills to passive buffs for your class, like Berserker class giving you the ability to do more damage the less health you have. You unlock these by spending elemental points that are obtained by either beating bosses or activating elemental rocks or some other third thing. It's another system that thankfully gives jobs more of a use than just changing stats and weapons. That's pretty much it for combat. The rest of the gameplay is 3D platforming using the elemental vessels to get around. It's fun, but I don't think it's as entertaining as the combat is. So let's get to the next part of the video, and that's the story and its characters. If I were to describe the story and characters of Visions, I'd say it's the definition of simple yet effective. There's nothing amazing or outstanding about what goes on in the game, but the execution of everything in said narrative was what kept me entertained. I know there's kind of a stigma around simple stories and characters where if they aren't super interesting that they can be seen as bad or boring, 
And honestly, I don't really agree. Yeah, sure, they can be kind of frustrating, I won't deny that. But I believe it more comes down to how well they're executed. Most of the time, these one-note characters are given the time or focus to really use their characteristics in a charming way. But thankfully, that's not the case with Visions, as all the cast members are utilized incredibly well and are each giving enough time to shine. It's not like they don't grow or face any hardship, so you never feel like they're static or not used well. So thankfully, it never feels like a chore to see them on screen. So what is the story even about? Well, you play as the Soul Guard Val, whose job is to guide the Elemental Alms onto what's known as the Pilgrimage, an event where every four years, one person from a select part of the world is chosen as an Elemental Alm to be sacrificed to the Monogardus. A pretty fucked up concept when you say it out loud, but if they aren't sacrificed to appease the world's mana, it leads to pure devastation that cannot be stopped, something that the game shows in the prologue alone to make you understand the powers at work here. Honestly, this mana dilemma is probably the most interesting aspect of the game. From everyone who looks at it as a rite of passage and something to celebrate being picked, the ones that believe it to be a problem that should be erased from society, this erasure from society is more on the villain side of the group, sure, who, while I think we're both great, I do have some complaints that I will go over in the con section. For now, I want to talk about the story a bit more. So, Val's girlfriend Hina is picked as the Alm of Fire, and from there, they set off together on the pilgrimage to find the other alms and bring them to the monetary, along the way meeting several problems that they must deal with, while learning more and more about the truth of why this pilgrimage even came to be. It's a fun, well-paced, and immensely entertaining, if a bit simple and straightforward story that I think anyone will be able to like. I would go into it more, but the game legit just came out like two months ago, so I'm trying my best to be as spoiler-free as possible. I just think that's for the best. And finally, let's talk about the music. It's just straight up fantastic. The three composers who worked on this title, Hiroki Kikuta, Tsuyoshi Sekito, and Ryo Yamazaki, all of whom who have apparently worked on previous Mana soundtracks, nailed the score for pretty much every scene. It made me want to check out the other titles for their tracks alone. Yes, they are just that fantastic sounding. And that's it for my pros. So it's time to move on to my cons with Visions. So, while I did have a bunch of praise to lay on Divisions of Mana, I do admit that I also have some complaints about the game as well, both in the story and gameplay departments. So first and foremost, let's talk about the gameplay. Now, like I spent quite a bit up front before, I adore the gameplay. Hell, I literally just went on a full tangent defending it from so unfair criticism. But even with my love, I did have one glaring issue, and that was the handling of your teammate's AI. Cause holy fuck, it is terrible. I can't tell you the amount of times these idiots just straight up slammed themselves into enemy AoE attacks or threw their bodies at the bosses and just straight up died, costing me both mana and items to revive them. Made especially more frustrating by the game limiting the amount of times you can use healing items in battle, which can create a resource burner even if you tweak their settings to be as useful as possible. It's probably at its worst during the vampire boss fight. So for some clarity, there is this bat-headed vampire boss around, I think, from what I recall, Chapter 7 or so, where he has a move where he rushes you, and if he grabs your character, he drains your health to refill his own. Honestly, the attack itself isn't the hardest in the world to dodge out of. Even when he covers the area in darkness, it isn't impossible to evade it if you get your bearings quickly enough. Unless you're an AI-controlled party member, because then you're just offering your soul to him, I guess. It's not hard to dodge the attack, you absolute diplets! Just do it for fuck's sake. <sighs> other than that, the only other gameplay complaint I had is how your movement is changed in towns. So for some odd reason, the devs decided that whenever you enter a town, that you should just lose the ability to air dodge and even cut down on your running speed. I guess by doing so, it's meant to evoke the essence that this is a safe space where you don't have to worry about things like monsters but I don't really like it. It just ends up making the town sections feel so much slower and unfun to traverse in comparison to the fields and dungeons. With those out of the way though, that takes care of my complaints about gameplay. So let's get into my issues with the game's story. Now for this one, I'm gonna need to go into some spoilers for a couple of characters. So if you want nothing spoiled, I recommend skipping to this time right here. We good? Okay. All right, so let's get into it. So for the most part, I love the story. The only two complaints I really have are the two villains of the game, Orin and Delaphos. I'm gonna start off with Orin since he was the first. Now Orin is an antagonist that was actually pretty interesting. He wants to gain the power to alter reality after losing his lover Liza at the start of the game due to wanting to run away with her so he doesn't have to lose her to the pilgrimage. From the very start, he's given a strong reason for wanting to change the world, and you can't exactly say he's wrong for wanting to change a world that makes this kind of stuff okay. He obviously goes too far, 
he ends up tricking the team and killing Hina as a result. And, you know, you're not meant to forgive that. But you can also understand his complete desperation to get back what he's lost. I love that kind of writing. My problem, however, comes from his conclusion. Whereas by the halfway point, he's replaced by Delafos as the main antagonist. Yeah, and he kind of just goes out like a bitch as well. You don't even get the honor of defeating him yourself. He just gets cut down by Delafos in a cutscene. No real confrontation outside of the one back and forth in front of the mana sword. No boss fight to clash and get your revenge for him tricking you and killing Hina. He just gets cut down and goes out with a flicker. I remember the sheer disappointment I felt in that moment as he died. No sadness, no anger, just a complete and utter, that's it? But that was only my issues with Orin. What problems did I end up having with Delaphos? Well, like Orin, I think he, for the most part, is handled very well. For a twist villain introduced basically halfway through the game, it's kind of impressive how well he's not only integrated into the story, to the point where he doesn't feel forced in the slightest, but how good pretty much every boss fight of his, outside of his final one, which isn't even really that bad, just kind of annoying. I just personally wish I could praise his motivations as well as I praised his boss fights. It's revealed that Delavos wants revenge on the Monogonis for the death of the love of his life, Corellia. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, to be honest. So naturally, you think the goddess herself has to be in some way responsible for her death. Like maybe she was the first ever elemental alm or something and he was forced to accept it. But no, instead it's revealed that his lover died instead to a no-name thief. So clearly this means the mana goddess is at fault and needs revenge, right? All right, that totally makes sense. They should do the world. Okay, what the fuck? How on earth do you collate losing your girlfriend to a thief to ending the world? It is never once implied through the entire story that the goddess herself caused her death. So why is she being blamed? I could believe this kind of anger if she had a hand in Krillia's death, even if it was by accident. Hell, I'd even believe him being manipulated by an evil force, as generic as that would be. But nope, it's none of those. His motivation is just boiled down to, I lost my waifu, so the goddess must die foo. And boy, is that disappointing as all get out. It really dampened my opinion of Delaphos as an antagonist by the endgame. I don't want to say this kind of trope can't work. There is media I love out there that uses this plot well, but Delaphos just doesn't for me. I get the idea behind him is they're probably trying to go for some sort of parallel to Val, but man, it just does not vibe well with me. Other than that, I really don't have any other complaints about the story, so that leaves my final complaint. It has to do with the crashes. Yeah, it didn't happen super often, but there were moments where a game would just encounter an error and crash. Like I said, it didn't appear super often, but good God, was it annoying when it happened. I'm not sure if this was a PC-only thing, or if it was on all systems. Let me know if it was in the comments. But what I do know is that it happened to me more than three times in my playthrough, and it should not have happened once. With that said, on to my final thoughts. So with this video coming to an end, I think I can easily say that while Visions of Mana did have some issues, some definitely were bigger than others, god damn, the game is just so fun and charming, I'm willing to overlook them. The whole experience, is just pure joy the whole way through, and I doubt I could ever get more hung up on the issues than I actually could. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that, once again, I am very interested in trying out more mana games. That's why my final rating for this game is a very charming 8.5 out of 10. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw here and want to join me for more, do me a favor and like and sub down below to see more in the future. Hit that bell for some notifications, and maybe leave me a comment on what you think of this game or the Mana series in whole. I would honestly love to hear more about this series from longer fans than I. With that said, have a lovely day, and I'll see y'all next time for more RPG content.